the Zone Coverage Podcast Network. The Andy Luke and Reef Football Machine. Autobots transform. I like this kind of body. Great cash, homie. Starts now. Welcome back to Thunder Note for another Zone Coverage Football Machine, Zone Coverage Podcast Network. Uh, I'm your national homeboss, Andy Carlson, at Andy Carlson Show on the Twitter machine, and I have equity. More equity than uh, when we always bring in uh, off-air, out-of-context conversations in an hour or two. So Chrissy Teigen's all right. Yeah, Chrissy yeah, Teigen's amazing. Some of this amazing. stuff should she's stay a, off the show. Chrissy Teigen's amazing. Yeah. Um, so funny. Yes. Uh, she's married to John Ledyard. <laughs> 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 that might be a little bit inside baseball, which is ironic because it's football. But uh, John Letty, your friend of the show, NDT scouting, what is up? Uh, hour two, uh, hour one, we talked about the Vikings draft and all the good times. Everyone stopped laughing. Uh, Arif is here. Yinka Ayende. Yes, sir. Yeah. The w- what are you to the show? Like you're. Uh, oh, it's like the Daily Show, and you're a contributor or like oh correspondent. Yeah, I'm a regular. I I've definitely. Oh, I was thinking he was like QB three, right? He's the John like, yeah, you bring him up when, yeah. in emergency quarterback situations. No, not really, because I like I, I I play a little bit more, so I'm like, like oh, okay. slot receiver. No, number three. No, it's just we just have Andrew Luck is the problem. You play more because Andrew Luck is QB one. That's why Arif is a jerk. We, we've established this now. He's uh, never here yes. though. So I, yeah, it's he true. Is Andrew That's Luck. True. <laughs> I think you've been here no, more I've, than Luke and Arif like in the last month. Is that not right? I've had more appearances on the show than anybody besides Andy. Sure. Well, yeah. We're talking about in the last month, though. I, what? I missed one week. I was it's like, a recent, <laughs> it's what have you done for me lately? In the last month, I've missed one show. No. Two. Three. Three. We got, we got well, for like yeah, two, two weeks one because you were working on the draft guide, and the other because you were dead. Yeah. I thought there was yeah. a third. The draft time. guide one, though, was, was legit. more than a month ago. Oh. 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 I see how it is. Is that yeah. how time works? I was legitimately worried about you when <laughs> you were sick. I was legitimately sick. I texted him, you guys. Did asked you? Him how he was. Yes. Be, be like, just end it. <laughs> <laughs> he, he looked like when the city goes around in the spring and just like flushes the hydrants. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a good time. That's uh, that's how they make pools in Philadelphia. Like, they, they tap into a hydrant and they fill up a dumpster with water. It's legit. Yeah. I, I I dislike everything about that city. Anyways, uh, except for the cheesesteaks, those are legit. So the moral of the story is. 38 to 7. Chrissy Teigen. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the one of those stories that yeah. bad people make good food, but yeah, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, so on my YouTube channel, you know, do up little Vikings videos, and every time there's this one dude, and I haven't blocked him from the channel because he's sort of entertaining, but he was like, ha, 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 Eagles, ring, 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 emoji, 38 to 7. And I thought, this is probably just a bot. I mean, he, it's probably just like whatever. Was this person part of our Slack briefly? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> whenever the, vi- whenever the com- uh, video comes up, like the comment is right there, but then one day, one of them was misspelled or like a different amount of A's in the ha ha ha. So I'm like, oh my oh, God. This, wow, he just this, types them out. This person actually goes in every day. That is dedication. Yeah. I love that. I mean, like, I, yeah. I will take the view from the jabroni. I'll take that. That's fine. Whatever. Like uh, Tom is here. 100th of a cent. Yeah. Uh, hey, Google AdSense breaks it in. It's like the <laughs> bank of change. How do you make money? Volume. Uh, <laughs> Tom, associate producer, sitting here chilling, watching Ricky Rubio do things while no. the Timberwolves are no, yeah, he's no, on the, he's he's on the bench. He's wearing the rookie hoodie. Yeah, whatever. For whatever. Donovan uh, producing the show, uh, Declan Goff. Yeah, so I'm, I'm happy to I, be here. I'm the Rubio of this show. I'm just sitting on the bench. Yeah. Really no, no, no I much. like Rubio. Change oh, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Change your face. Um, yeah, 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 change. change your face. <laughs> no, Alexi. I, I, I Alexi. like how Rubio has gone from like sort of a your, your little kid brother when he was here with the Wolves, and then he turned into the villain from Bad Boys 2. Yeah. Like straight up Johnny Tapia. Like, the meme of like tell you the guy not to worry about is literally the Ricky Rubio from like Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the yeah. same one. Absolutely. All right. Um, yeah, we're going to take your phone calls. We, we got uh, listener Twitter questions as well. Let's warm up with a couple of those since we got. A bajillion of them. Uh, first one up is going to be. That would be good if I had them up. 
production value. Uh, from Infrared, uh, as the draft was falling, were there certain players you would have chosen instead at 30, 62 later on, etc.? So who, curious to get your guys. Uh, who, 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 all right, so. Connor. Connor. I think I would have t- taken Connor and then maybe. Straight look, up at 30? Yeah, and then yep. look at it. Um, you know, I, obviously, Spielman did say that, you know, they got a lot of calls, obviously, before pick 30 came around. And then when pick 30 happened, the phone calls just stopped. Yeah. So, I mean, that's obviously an opportunity for them to trade down a few spots or whatever the case is. It's like Kathy Griffin, the, the phone just stopped ringing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, if we had to say at 30, I would have taken Connor and then look at, you know, one of the other corners that were still available. Um, Because there was a few. Because after the first round, the corners really didn't get picked until, what, maybe middle of the second round? Yeah. um, So that's when Josh Jackson went, which I can't believe. God. Did you have have Jackson over uh, Hughes? No. No? Um, I I, I was actually lower on Jackson than a lot of people, but still think that's a tremendously good pick for the Packers. It is. Uh, Scheme-wise, he he was just difficult to find which scheme he would go into. Yeah. 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 but, uh, you know, MJ Stewart, who I was pretty high on, uh, who incidentally was involved in the same frat incident that Mike Hughes was pegged for at UNC, yeah. where he busted a dude's face. Um, so there's just the two of them. That's it. Yeah. So uh, they both come out in the same draft. MJ Stewart was uh, was available as a corner later on. So if they pass on Mike Hughes, that pushes all the cornerbacks down. Mm. Uh, and so that's another thing to think about is that one more corner – would have been available than had been available, probably. Obviously, yeah. like teams straight up. Oh, they had, they had Hughes and Stewart on the same team. Why were they bad? Oh, yeah, Trubisky. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, um, let's see. Which corners were available uh, by the time the Vikings pick? At, at what, Which pick was it that they traded away? 62? Uh, 94. Oh, right, yeah, at the bottom of the third. Um, yeah, because so yeah, they did pick at 62. So at 62... Uh, there was a run on corners right before them. So MJ Stewart, Dante Jackson, who I didn't like, Duke Dawson, who I liked a lot. Uh, and then after that, you could have gotten um, Carlton Davis, who I liked a lot. Yeah. Um, and again, all these cornerbacks probably get pushed down one, so Duke Dawson's probably available. Um, yeah, I, there's a lot of interesting... I don't like Rashawn Golden. He was available. Uh, Isaac Yadam's interesting. Yeah, there's like two or three corners that were kind of interesting that could have gotten that way. And obviously, it's like very easy to... Look at a draft and be like, yeah. yeah. But that is like Spielman's job and the one that he failed pretty spectacularly at in this draft in terms of being able to read where players would be available on the board. So and that and, and that was a that was a criticism that I gave to him. Again, obviously we're doing this all hindsight, so it's it's you know it is that whole twenty twenty thing. But as far as we kind of knew that this draft was a little unusual, kind of going into it, right? Mm-hmm. When obviously yeah. you know it's going to be a bad draft when a guard and a running back are your top, like the top players in that draft class, and then obviously you you had that huge like where the quarterbacks were were going to drop that obviously determined a lar- large majority of where you know some of the corners were getting picked, some of like the top linebackers were going to get picked, but then obviously once you saw Isaiah win. Uh, Frank Ragnow, Billy Price, all fly off. they went back to back to back, right? Yeah. And once you uh, saw them all fly off the board, yeah. that should have yeah, been Billy like, Price, yeah, yeah, yeah. that should have been your thing that, to be like, hey, maybe we need to get her, get yeah, our so that, together. That's, so like, uh, I mean, Jamal Stevenson kind of always sounds like this, so it's not fair to say it, but he did sound shell shocked. Yeah. Um, when he was describing he all, that, like, he always sounds like this. Well, I mean, he's Jamal, like an even keeled guy. So Jamal Stevenson's like, been through some stuff, man. <laughs> right. But he, but he, like, he sounded shell shocked when he was like, I've never seen that many offensive yep. linemen go at the top of the draft. And it's like, yeah, but you've, you also just said, yeah. hello. Uh, <laughs> you also just said <laughs> that, it, yeah, we can totally yeah, yeah, hold hear it. I'm, I'm, in the, I'm in the middle of a useless rant. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But he also said this is the strongest interior offensive line class that, that he's ever seen, so I don't know what he expected. Yeah. Anyway, caller, who we got? Who we got? Yeah. Wait, am I on the phone right now? Yeah, yeah. totally. What's your What's name? Up? Um, Bo. Hey, Bo. Oh, hey, Bo. Where Bo, are you from? Bo Callahan, no matter what. From uh, the great state of Iowa. Nice. Bo, oh, pretty good state. Yeah. Yeah, Bo, what's on your mind? You know, I'm a big Vikings fan. That's dope. We're but a Vikings I got the Vikings. Iowa bias. I thought you'd take... Josh Jackson over Mike Hughes. I was a little butthurt over that. You think Josh Jackson should have been worth the 30th pick? Do you think he was a first-round talent? <laughs> yeah, I thought he was a first-round talent. He balled out last year. What do you think about that? Then he went to the Packers, you know? That, that's a you know, that sucks. I, I'm, I'm ticked that he went to the Packers. What do you think about the 40-time problem, though, right? Everyone was talking about his 40-time. Uh, 
what do you run? Like a four six or something? Close, yeah. Like a four five eight, four I don't six. Know. Yeah. He was running I think when he's more in the moment, he'll ball out. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, is that uh, is that all you got? You have any other <laughs> no, thoughts? No, they should have took James Daniels. <sighs> well, yeah, what do you think about James Daniels? I don't even know who James Daniel is, to be honest. This is Iowa is Center. Man. Yeah, it's the Center? Iowa Center, yeah. I don't know. I think put him the left guard, right guard. He would have been good. Yeah. Hey, Bo, appreciate you calling in that, man. Thanks, Bo. Well, <laughs> Declan, I'm hot on the Declan, button, man. Declan's Bring it on. Wow, here. Declan just goes, I got, man. I'm used to eight phone lines. This is this is what I cake. This is fire time. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be Bo Allen for a little bit, but I thought it's uh, is Bo Mitchell the Vikings, whatever Viking actor or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twitter, yeah, yeah. That's who I may have thought it might be. Yeah, but Bo, we love you. Th- sure. Thanks, Bo. Yeah. Do we though? Uh, Fast fingers. Do, do you know Bo? I, <laughs> you don't know Bo. No, I uh, I live. The only Bo I know I, 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 had Mo in front of it. So. I, I love that uh, <laughs> GNC is trying to use Bo Jackson as a spokesperson. Where it's like Bo uh, never took what? any supplement ever. It's yeah, like, are you kidding like, me? Famously, didn't even like, work out. Like, like what? <laughs> like the only supplement he's on is Bo Jackson. <laughs> Actually, they just sell that uh, from uh, at uh, Superfan uh, uh, Goble like Noble. Uh, who are we drafting first overall in 2019? <laughs> Lindvall's replacement. Who's, who's, who's the top quarterback picks. in the league? Uh, in the Drew, the Drew uh, Oregon guy, Herbert. Yeah. Her, which I don't want to draft a quarterback named Herbert, man. Uh, no, well, I mean, we're we gonna already have a bear. We already have yeah. we already have a swagless quarterback right now. You yeah, right. can't draft a guy named Swagless quarterback. quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> no swag. Uh, at Skull Huskers. All right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> big JD Spielman <laughs> fan. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, can he? Can Hughes add enough? Oh, God. Okay. All right. Of course, this is. Can Hughes add enough bulk to play right guard or right tackle? Uh, no. No. That's no. That's not got the fair. arm length. That's though. a no for me, dog. No. <laughs> Actually, nah, nah, nope. Nah. Nope. Uh, oh, what about Hercules? Could he play O line? <laughs> Uh, if you can add that much bulk, just, I mean, then just play D line. I don't understand. <laughs> Nate Wozniak probably could. That's true. That's actually probably his best chance. Best chance. Yep. <laughs> You know, Hercules, it, I feel like he's the kind of guy that if you ask him to gain 50 pounds of muscle, he'll do it. Or if you ask him to drop to one. You don't think Washington State asked him to add weight? No, like Mike Leach, he swings his own sword. Like, he thinks like... Oh, okay, that's actually fair. Yeah, whatever. No, we're going to be in passing situations anyway. Who <laughs> cares right. how big you weigh? Yeah, I don't, I don't care how much you do yeah, against them. They're going to be playing catch-up. Hello. <laughs> Except for against the Gophers. Shut up. We Powerful. got a 952 number. Hey, caller, who we got? Hey, my name's Ian. Ian, what's going on, man? What's on your mind? Hey, um, so I had a question for you guys. Yep. Of of all the undrafted wide receivers that we picked up, which is your guys' favorite? Uh, well, I mean, there's like essentially two, right? Unless I'm I'm missing one. Uh, Winicky Badet, uh, Southern oh, Miss. Yeah, I don't I don't count Badet. He's a kick returner. Um, I like uh, I like the Southern Miss guy whose name I just keep forgetting, which makes it like the other Michael Thomas. <laughs> yeah, 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 good Michael Thomas. Um, which it makes me Is that, feel uh, Corey bad. Robertson. Yeah, Corey Robertson, a lot of production. Uh, he can go up and get it uh, on occasion. Um, I like him more than Weinicke. My issue with Weinicke is I know that he's like competing with a second round pick uh, for yardage and stuff like that. But from like a production standpoint, you should account if you're a receiver, you should account for a greater percentage of your team's yards uh, on the field. I don't think he does anything like stand out well. Like mm-hmm. I don't think he's good enough route runner where he can just get pie on craftiness. I don't think he's good enough in the air to win fifty fifties. I don't think he's like fast enough to just blow by people. Um he's just like kinda good all around and I feel like that works really well in college. I don't know if that works uh quite as well when you're trying to get uh wow. onto a roster. Well he he did deal with all those double teams uh since uh you know teams were singling up Goddard all the time. Yeah, like, that's, uh, yep. First thing that, like, uh, <laughs> nor- Northern State, all right, you got to stop Winicky. <laughs> if Goddard beats it, he, he beats us. <laughs> Let him run. I, I feel like people just want Winicky because he's, like, the hometown boy. Yeah. Am, am I wrong on that? No, I, I think you're right. And it's not like the difference is, like, massive. They're both undrafted free agents. So, no. I mean, just, like, pick your favorite. It kind of yeah. doesn't matter. Now, have him make the team, uh, my favorite. then uh, try and cut him every year. Go the Cheryl's route instead right. of Thielen. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but hey, good stuff. Appreciate yeah. you calling in, Ian. Absolutely. Thanks, man. All right. We got another call? We do. 
Wait. He, he's he gone. Oh. That's too bad. Yeah. He was there. Yeah, he'll call back. Uh, they always call yeah, back. Our, uh, <laughs> our callers are very well trained. They know that we don't have a board because... Uh, yeah. Uh, at at <laughs> Thanks, C. Kelt, uh, Hughes versus Josh Jackson. Uh, return game. Soul, uh, Hughes. Uh, all right, so all right, start over. Uh, Hughes versus Josh Jackson. <laughs> okay. ret- return game, soul differentiator, or just because Hughes is better? Hughes is better. No, Hughes is better. Hughes is better. Yeah. yeah people- uh, so, from a production standpoint, so mm. I, I'm talking about the numbers because that's uh, all the work I did all week. Mm. Uh, he's the single best cornerback uh, in terms of like adjusted yards per. Coverage snap in terms yeah. of uh, passer rating allowed. That isn't Jair Alexander, and you can fairly exclude Alexander because he only played six games. So, mm-hmm. uh, for a full season, he had the best production profile. Hey, caller, who we got? You got AJ from Lincoln. AJ from Lincoln. What's going on, man? <clears throat> hey, can you tell hey, us a little bit about this it. Tyler Hops guy? Do I what? The Nebraska tight end, the undrafted free agent. What? What about him? Can you tell us a little bit about him? Yeah, I don't know anything about him. I could I could tell you zero. I mean he's pretty he's pretty large. That is what I can tell you. That's a thing I didn't but, know. So now I know more. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah I, I think we established that uh, a- AJ isn't a Huskers fan. Yeah, but I mean like you're in the I'm not. market. Yeah, Good for you, man. The, the only Husker he knows is JD Spielman. <laughs> that is right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry, my man. Uh, I didn't want to. I don't want to make you guys too hungry, but I got a couple food questions. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah totally. Okay. Uh. So first, first one is uh, rank, I want you guys to rank, give a reason, the top four fast food chains, T-Bell, McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's. And I just want to know what your preference is of, of the big four. Uh, mine would be McDonald's, T-Bell, what was the other two? Wendy's and Wendy's Burger and BK. King. Yeah. Are you going from four put, to one or one to four? I'm going one to four. Okay. okay so McDonald's is your number one? McDonald's is my number one. Yeah. T-Bell. I'll go BK then Wendy's. It's like right, this year's so draft class. All I'm kind going. Of I'm going Wendy's one. The reasoning is because I got the spicy chicken sandwich, and they, they do like do a spicy they do change up their menu a lot, and some of the ways that they change up their menu are pretty good. Uh, I mean, their service is very often like it's not standardized like McDonald's is, so it's like you know hit or miss. <laughs> uh, um, uh, then probably two McDonald's because uh, I mean it's like consistent and good. Uh, plus they opened up breakfast. Three, I'm going to have to go with BK. I think they're underrated uh, in the fast food world. We had that really, when we went to training camp last year, that really delicious, like, breakfast burrito that they had. Do you remember that? Yeah. Where they had, like, it was, like, it was, yeah. (laughs) It was really weird, but it was, like, underratedly good. Did you guys share it and eat it, like, a Lady in the Tramp style? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and we had, like, this cheese strand that we were just sucking. Um, But, yeah, uh, and then I'll go with with T-Bell last. I just, I'm... T Bell is like the it's cheapest on option. It's growing on, and me. it's always open. But it gets a lot of so there's a lot of that. food for yeah, right, yeah. yeah. So yeah. So you best get, bargain for your buck. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's sure. best bargain for your buck for sure. Uh, uh, I swore off T Bell because they gave a lot of money to Trump. That's just oh, a silly sh- thing, man. Why but you like, gotta be telling me that kind of stuff? Uh, look, but I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> but I mean, that did, that, did not, <laughs> that did not affect my rankings. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just saying, uh, T Bell. You know, it's just like it's whatever. There's a a low ceiling to their food. Uh, for me, it's two horse race. Uh, Ty yeah. McDonald's just because of the breakfast, and uh, then Wendy's, the baconator and the chili. Come on, right? Come on, uh, play a shoot. Wendy's is last for me. I freaking hate Wendy's. Really? Yeah, uh, Wendy's is in the flipping. What base. is this? Were, were, yeah. were you spurned by uh, a beautiful redheaded girl with pigtails once? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> oh. But I would, I would say Taco Bell and McSquirts are one and two without a doubt. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts on what we just said? Uh, I. I think I think that that point about McDonald's being reliable is is pretty good. Wendy's has had just some of my worst yeah, customer right. service experiences yeah. ever. I yeah, mean, that's pretty fair. Bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think I think McDonald's being in the top two is pretty fair. I don't. I think BK is actually pretty awful. I'm surprised you said it's underrated. Well, it depends on what you have. Like the original chicken sandwich, I think is really good. I see the Coke Icy. That's my jam, right? Wait, I, I love that their product uh, research and development uh, is kind of like out to lunch. It's like, <laughs> uh, it's the extra long cheeseburger. What is it? Well, we have a bunch of like uh, like uh, sandwich uh, buns from uh, the chicken overhead. Sandwich. Yeah. That, uh, all right, we'll just make an extra long burger. For some reason, that extra long burger tastes way worse than if you just had two burgers. <laughs> I don't know why, uh, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, I think the Whopper is kind of overrated. I think the flame grill taste that they just add to the burgers is, like, whatever. Um, but, I mean, the fries, uh, 
So the McDonald's fries taste better warm, but the Burger King's fries you can just eat after yep. five minutes. This is true. Yeah. Uh, and so I feel like you have to give credit to Burger King for that. Uh, the chicken fries have grown on me. Like all the stuff that's not like their flagship burger, I actually kind of like. They had a bit of chicken fries. Okay. Yep. Hey, hey. I just feel like if you're if you if you were driving across country and just desperate for food, and if I saw the Burger King sign, I'd, I'd probably be the most disappointed. I would say. <laughs> Let's keep nice, driving. Man. That's the great thing about America, AJ. There's choices. <laughs> uh, okay. any, any other questions? My, this was fun. <laughs> my, uh, my other question was, uh, okay, so uh, let's just say each of you guys did something illegal to a Packers fan. You're going to get sent to the chair tomorrow night. Jeez. And you had to. Is Minnesota it, even half a chair? And then you, you, but you got to pick one meal. Whatever you oh, wanted, love these. you know your last meal. I'm oh. curious what your last meal would be. Well, obviously Wendy's. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, that's uh, I. I think probably if if they can if they can hack it, um, just like a 72 hour braised short rib. Oh, have you ever had that? That is so good. <laughs> have you ever had it? It's so it's it's one of the best things I've ever eaten. If not, then probably just fried chicken. <laughs> um, I'm saying, which like <laughs> that's a that's a high ceiling food that doesn't give enough credit. Correct. Drums or flats though. Uh, drums, drums. My man. Drums. My man. Not even fried chicken th- chicken thighs. No, no, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely chicken thighs. Okay. Wow. Whatever. Whatever. I'm, not Whatever. Ta- I'm not saying wings, man. I'm saying fried chicken. So I'm, I'm getting the thighs. Drums though. Um. Whatever. Uh. And then if I'm getting with either of those, obviously really good mashed potatoes and gravy. Uh, and then I'll probably figure out my vegetable choices day of, right? Do I want asparagus that day? Do I want, you know, yeah, fried Yeah, but your pistol smell once they, once they fry you. Yeah, well, that's what they get. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's another point in asparagus' <laughs> favor, I guess. Maybe a Brussels sprouts. I don't know. That's like a day of decision. But, uh, yeah, my, my first choice is like a 72-hour braised short rib. Uh, me, give me a ribeye. Uh, give me a rack of ribs. And also, this is really stupid. Uh, all right, bologna. And bologna and uh, American cheese sandwich, yellow mustard, and Wonder Bread. Just like straight up from the back before I was a murderer. Back, <laughs> back when I was a kid. <laughs> like good the greatest things ever. Wait, so did you, are you implying that you started murdering people when you <laughs> became an adult? Like, that, that was the turning point. <laughs> I stopped eating the sandwiches well, the, uh, and I started killing people. In yeah. this scenario, the year is 2030, and you can be sentenced to the chair for Twitter offenses. Wow. Yeah. Everyone's dead. Yeah. We are oh, so no. no it, it's going to be like Will Smith, I am a legend. Yeah. <laughs> his son is definitely dead because of his Twitter offenses. Yeah, I'm out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can, I hope okay. I get a last name. I, I think I offended a bunch of people on my offended a bunch of people on my Twitter <laughs> offenses today. I never know when it's up or down. Or anyways, uh, last meal. Um, Phrasing. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Last meal would probably be, I don't know. I, I definitely, definitely fried chicken would be be in it. Um, I love rice. I grew up on rice, so mm-hmm. it would probably be some kind of rice dish. Yeah, and then I think that, I would say rice, but no. <laughs> and then um, something like like weird on the side that's like memorable, like Jello or something like that. Jello. That's what I'd do. You know, New York strip steak and a jar of pickles. That would be mine. Steak too. Yeah, strip. But steak. I. But if I had to choose one, or like a what nice. cut of steak. I mean, Andy chose a cut. Yeah, New York, New yeah. York strip. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 But like, I mean, it, oh. Yeah. oh, what, what, what cut of steak? I mean, Yinka chose, Declan chose. You didn't choose a cut. Skirt. Um, skirt is so good, Jason man. Jason skirts, man. A nice beef round. Yeah, <laughs> beef is good. B- yeah, beef is good. Dude, beef Great, is good. <laughs> thanks. Hey, uh, AJ, appreciate the uh, the levity in between all the draft jabroniness. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, thanks. You're Thanks welcome, man. You guys do. Appreciate you. Have a good one. That was a good call. That yeah. was a good call. I did not expect that. Maybe I'll get the ribeye, man. That's good. Back into football. <laughs> Rob, back, back Rob, football. Rob 21. Uh, what's the ceiling for Hughes? Uh, between all pro? He's, I mean, he doesn't really have a ceiling. C, CB2? What? In 20, 2019. That's his ceiling, though? His ceiling like, is CB2? His, well, I'm saying he's not going to outbeat Rhodes. Is, is what Why I'm not? You think he'd, he'd think he'd be... You're talking about a ceiling. If he yeah. becomes the best possible corner he could be with his athletic gifts, his instincts, his ball skills, whatever, he could become an all-pro. Yeah. Is, is so his he range... Could be better <laughs> you than could Rose. still be an all-pro at a CB2. 
He could be better than. I mean, Rhodes is so? like quite good. Rhodes he, is quite good. Yes. You think Hughes could be no. Rhodes? Isn't Darrell Revis? No, dude. I'm not. I'm not saying that he is, but <laughs> like, I just I didn't think that he was as good as uh, as. Rhodes. I don't think. No, okay. I'm, I'm just talking about ceiling. I don't <laughs> think he'll be as good as Rhodes. Okay. I'm just but saying, saying ceiling, is, ceiling is higher than Rhodes is. Right. is what you're well, saying. currently, about, because we know the trajectory of Rhodes, it's very good, but it's not the best cornerback in the NFL. Yeah. All right. So Hughes' the ceiling's there. What about his floor? Relatively high, or he, could he crack? He's a cornerback. Every cornerback's floor is like yeah, could be out of the yeah. league yeah. in yeah. like, in like a few Asher years. Allen or yeah. <laughs> right. where is it? Asher going? Allen apparently had some of the best footwork that yeah. Vikings defensive backs coaches could ever work with. Mm. Also bad at football. Yeah, one <laughs> <laughs> dancing with the stars five years in a row though. Yeah. <laughs> right. Just snatch Jerry Rice's chain from him. No big deal. Uh, at the Big Herman, uh, do you believe Matafaha? Mata Afa will Ufasa. be uh, yeah. linebacker long term, or is that just a, a placeholder uh, position? It's it's not like they like they tried him out at edge and were like, well, this isn't working. We'll move you yeah. to linebacker. They started at linebacker. They're going to give him a lot of time to figure that out. Plus, I mean, like the Vikings aren't the only team that thought about him as linebacker. In order to sign him, I can't imagine that. Oops, sorry, I can't imagine that another team was like, no, we'll let you play the position that you want to play. Mm. Like, I think every team essentially offered him what he wanted, and it sounded like he wanted to transition to linebacker in the NFL. So my guess is he's going to stay at linebacker, and he's going to live or die with that ability. I don't think he's going to be converted back maybe to edge, but not to defensive tackle. Uh, from the real Forno, uh, with the tone of this draft, Rick is more focused on the future of this team rather than a win-at-all-cost approach for this year. In your opinion... Jesus. At all costs. That, that, I guess that wasn't the question. What does that mean? Uh, in your opinion, is there a way he could have realistically achieved both with the available picks? I think he did do both. Uh, I don't think he did do both. Uh, I mean, it's the draft uh, scenario that Yank and I just outlined mm-hmm. on the video. Draft Connor Williams, then draft uh, po- probably the best available corner or just the best available player in round two. If it is a corner, there were some pretty good corners available. Um, and would be more available because you push a corner down um, yeah. by not drafting Hughes. So, you know, whatever, you could end up getting a running back, which would be weird, but you could get one. You could get anybody, but if you got the right guard there, you it's not like drafting a guard does mm-hmm. not lay the foundation for your future. Like, he's also a player on a four-year contract. Um, so uh, it's, like, weird to characterize one approach as the only win-now approach. I think uh, if you had drafted a guard, which... The guards were highly rated. That like three went at the top of the second round. Um, you would have been kind of in the same. You would have been in the same boat. Now it wasn't a win at all cost approach. That probably would have been trading up for Quentin Nelson or something, or like yeah. Frank Rag now, I guess, because uh, that's actually achievable. Um, I don't think they did that. They they either you know stayed put or traded back, or they traded up for a kicker. Like there there wasn't a lot of you know all in to win mm-hmm. sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, except for uh, Luke's mock draft from last week, that was pretty good. <laughs> Quentin, no matter what, he went oh, one of the it. Quentins went undrafted. <laughs> <laughs> we had a fourth round grade on him. It <laughs> 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 happens. Uh, from uh, Ben Arnold seven 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 seven. Uh, yeah, who the hell is going to play right guard? Compton is below average at best. Lion Tom Compton. Uh, if Isadora <laughs> is that good. <laughs> <laughs> if his door is that good, he would have played ahead of Searles. Duh. And no That's a chance really of, good point. No chance of Remmers moving there with Hill being exposed the way he was in the playoffs. So who question mark? I mean, out of out of those three players, Rashad Hill, uh Danny Sidora, Jeremiah or uh and um Tom Compton. Yeah. I mean Rashad Hill's the best one, so you can mm. move Remmers to guard. Is I, Rashad Hill a better right tackle than any of those guys probably would be at right guard? Yeah, that's what I'm getting across. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Could Compton um, play right tackle? Probably not. Probably not well. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> confident that he could line up correctly on the field and play right tackle. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, out of those, I mean, maybe Mike Remmers plays guard and you have Rashad Hill play tackle. Or you're just like, you know, Brian O'Neill's developmental, but he'll develop on the field. Start. Yeah. <laughs> you know, whatever. Yeah, the, that's the, the clemming zinging. Oh. You know, a, a, that after, was an unforced error. God. After a year of seasoning and right tackle, he'll be fine next year. Oh, we're moving to left tackle? Well, crap. <laughs> oh, we're moving to guard, because that's that's always the left Alamo tackle well. yeah. uh, <laughs> right. on tackles. Like, Sometimes it works. The that's the weird thing to yeah. me. Or the reverse was true for David Yankee. Like, his last gas is death throws in training camp. They're like, oh, we'll try my left tackle. 
He, he looks slightly better at tackle, too. That's yeah. the worst part. And it's like, he gone. Willie Beavers look better at tackle. They yeah. started him out at guard, and they were like, wow, this is a trash fire. We're going to cut our <laughs> fourth-round pick. Brought him back onto the practice squad, and he looked better at tackle. They cut him anyway, but still, yeah. and worth pointing out. Right. Uh, with what we know, uh, how w- which was the worst fourth rounder, TJ or Beavers? Uh, uh, Beavers. I think Beavers. Him. Right yeah. away, they cut him. He couldn't even live his rookie contract out. Mm. Yeah, I think everybody knew when Beavers was selected in the fourth round. That was like, this is probably a really bad. Beavers had the worst pass protection scores yeah. of any player drafted in that draft, the next draft, or the one after. I think that was. Yikes! I think yeah. that might be the only pick I can remember. Uh, or it might just be kind of just, but, but where it was like, this is a bad pick. Oh, it is bad. Oh, it was bad. Yeah, like, right, there was never any deviation. There's never any spot where you're like, huh, no, no. <laughs> right. uh, what, what's interesting is about... Is he still on our practice squad? No, I don't think he's oh. on the team anymore. Oh. No, he's not. Uh, um, oh. Which I remember, so I, I remember I tweeted out last year in training camp, they're like, oh, Willie Beavers is looking better than he ever has. He actually looks better than some of these backup tackles he's competing against. That's pretty interesting. He might be able to make the roster. And immediately there were people like on the Daily Norseman at Zone mm-hmm. Coverage, on my Twitter feed, that were like, Siri, if you were wrong, it was a good pick. And mm-hmm. I was like, what? But they wouldn't have they could have just signed him. They cut him. It was like not a good pick because <laughs> they could have just signed him at literally any time, yeah. which is what they did because they cut him. Um yeah, so he is not... I'm just double-checking. He's not on the team. Instead, Dayugat Joseph is on the team. Oh, perfect. From FIU. That guy. Um, <laughs> I Semi- wrote like a scouting Semi- report on him a while back, and I don't remember it. So yeah. yeah, Storm Norton, Cedric Lang. There's some really good names on this team. Hercules. I like all those yeah. names. Rock, Storm. Solid names. Cedric Lang. Oh, these are great. Yeah, that, these all that, sound like dog names, to be honest. See, that's a reversal of like the Hercules, early 2000s Vikings, where the names were like Christian and Percy and Adrian. Or it's like, all right, well, these are all... Uh, we're done with this. These are all unisex names. What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> uh, from KMBR... Why is everyone's Twitter handle so complicated? Well, they all want to be bots now. It's the cool thing. Yeah. Oh, 09. Uh, just because Reckard was the biggest hole in the team doesn't mean you forced the pick. Pretty sure they want a rag now, and he went earlier than How, expected. Why do people think that pick would have been forced? Three guards went, like, right away at the top of the Thank second. Yeah, no. Like, what? <coughs> There's no way you could have pr- predicted that, Arif. Yeah, if, if, no. if only, like, literally Please. every yes. mock draft simulation ever had predicted a run of guards in the top of the there second There were so round. many people that, like, that even, like, what you said that DM do were just like, Arif, if I didn't pick... A guard or some kind of offensive lineman, I could not find they one in the yeah, second round. They would have all been gone in the second. Yeah, I got so many people telling me I used your consensus board. Which <laughs> reminder, <laughs> best predictor of the draft that uh, out of any board. I'm just you know putting that out there. Yeah. Spielman needs to. It's, it's so weird. Um, <clears throat> and so like surprise, the strongest interior offensive line class ended up having a run on the interior offensive line. Um, it wouldn't have been a forced pick at all. Like. Those are all really good players. I don't know why people think it would have been. Plus, you should have seen it coming, just like you can see it coming on uh, those fan speak mocks because you can see wh- where the players are going to go. <laughs> right. By yeah. the number. By the number. Uh, uh, yeah, so like normally I wouldn't like bring up, like, oh, wow, fan speak predicted this would happen. That's the guide you should use. Yep. But like, it's not even just using my board. If you use a lot of people's board, the mm. same thing happens. And. Even Kyle Krabs? If, even, well, <laughs> yeah, maybe not. With Krabs, we could have had Brian O'Neill in the seventh. Yeah, right. Actually, almost certainly. I think we ended up drafting Brian O'Neill in the sixth. Also Josh Allen. <laughs> um, but, uh, but, yeah, I mean, like, it's weird to, like, take a computer simulation that's designed to be a game, not an mm-hmm. actual simulation, uh, and say, yeah, you should have predicted it. You know, this thing saw it coming. Uh, but, like, when it out-predicts you, that's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but still. Yeah, but still. Yeah. Uh, Stark Wolf A2, is anyone excited for O'Neal? I'm excited about Brian O'Neal as much as Andy Carlson is excited about the Daniel Carlson pick. Well, I'm kind of, meh, Are whatever. you really excited? You just no, like the really. name, man. I'm not even hyped about the name. I was like, we had a Carlson before on the team. He was bad. Who, who was it? John. John. Oh, Brian yeah. Brian Litchfield. Yeah. Five for 25. Two tight end set. Yeah. Minnesota boy. Um... Oh, excited about O'Neal? I mean, I feel like people I'm are excited about the about upside. His future. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, this year, I mean, 
Okay, if he, if he starts at right tackle and Mike Remmers is guard, I'm yeah. really interested to see what happens. Like, I, f- I feel like you say interested, and you're <laughs> not using it in the context that you really mean. Yeah. And I think you really mean I'm terrified. No, no, no. I'm, I'm actually like, if he wins the right tackle job, I think that that's a really positive sign, and I think it means good things. And while I'm not going to say that definitely means he's good if he's starting, because I'm a Vikings fan, I know yeah. that's like definitively not the yeah. case. Uh, I am going to say like, I'm really open to the idea that he could play right away at a high level. What if he's just handed the job? I don't, it's like, the Vikings. They're not going to hand him the job. Uh, the, the only way the job is handed to him is just by a lack of talent at the position. Like I yeah. think they will genuinely have competition there. It's like, well, we, we have to justify this. All in. Rick, Rick just shoves all of his chips in the middle. Yeah, I mean, like when you can start a 60-second overall pick without any competition, <laughs> you got to. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Oh, here, here's what you should do. Uh, start them all 16 games. If he's terrible, has like a, a 44 PFF score, but have one awesome tackle eligible reverse or like a screen to him and he scores, all is forgiven. Had, did the Vikings have any um, good uh, unbalanced line formation plays this like last year at all? Uh, like I, th- I feel like they all failed. Uh, well, yeah, they had some, but they, they failed. Um, I'm thinking... Oh, that's taking too long. Yeah, it is. Hey, caller, who we got? Who we got here? Hi, it's Alex in Rope. Alex, what's up, man? How's it going? Washington game. Oh, you know, I've got like a laundry list of things to complain about. So when you want to just cut me off, (laughs) cut me off. All right, shoot. Don't, but don't, no, don't let a reef choose because he'll just do it. Well, I'm, I'm Um, telling you to go. I'm not, I'm not going to choose. Andy will choose. Okay, perfect, excellent. So I didn't like the draft, Um, and it's not an uncommon. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it's all right because it's a, like a, a bird did not make a pick, <laughs> <laughs> or a parrot, or whatever it was. That's true, um, but like, so I, I think Spielman tends to draft a little riskier than most GMs, and I feel like as fans, you have to recognize that and kind of take the good of the bad. You know, you can't get really upset when a high risk move doesn't work out in your favor. Yeah, John Green's like, hold my mimosa. Excited about, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so, you know, whatever it, it is, what it is. Um, the community and like the Vikings community in general, though, I like I stayed off Twitter for the most part. Good for the first couple of rounds, <laughs> and it's not even the people that are like super upset about because, like I said, I wasn't wild about the draft. I just, I don't know, man. Like we got to start playing bingo with draft day tropes when it comes to social media because I just felt like there's so many condescending takes out there and just like, and that's just me. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, like, sure, like cond- sure. condescending in like what direction or like every direction, right? Because there's a bunch of people who are like, do you think you know better than Rick Spielman? It's like, well, I'm paid to have an opinion. I don't know like about you, but right. you probably have opinions. Or do you think it's and like the, also, the thing is, it's like this approach with taking and So like the offensive line is specifically what I'm not like, and like, I get it. Uh, you know, Spielman, and this is the other thing, like, well, are you surprised that Rick Spielman didn't take a, you know, an O-line at 30? Like, no, I'm not surprised. That doesn't mean I'm happy about it. You know, <laughs> right, it's, right. Like, I feel like this was the year if you were going to break that trend of you right. know, passing on a more sure thing. And I, and I get it. Not everyone, you know, no one is a sure thing in the draft. Right, yeah, yeah. Trend I, I know what you're getting at. Wasn't. Yeah. But, like, you know, you, you, it's a risk assessment. And so, like, I, I feel like... I don't know. It, it's kind of disingenuous to be, to be like, well, you know, you, you can't be mad because you you're, you you know you shouldn't be surprised about this. And it's like the the offensive line, like last year, was kind of an anomaly. I think it, you know the they were average? For the, the breadth of um, mm. Spielman's tenure as the guy calling the shots. The offensive line has been a weakness, and I feel like a big part of that weakness has been, you know, relying on guys like. Colby, Jack, Gouda, or whatever is in Col- uh, Gossett, Gossett. Yeah. Um, you know, like six Andy's round right. Jack is be his You know, machine. sometimes it works out. You can't rely on that. So, yeah, I mean, like this idea that, well, you know, you don't know what, you know, how, how are you saying you know better than the Vikings? Well, no, not necessarily. I'm a dumbass fan. But, like, the Vikings haven't given us a track record to show that, you know, they're, they should be trusted with handling the O-line situation. And so, no, I'm not going to be sorry about 
not approving of passing on a guy that I, I, I don't know, man. And then like the, this is, this is what I found to be really funny is like, we have to do this thing shortly after the, it's almost every year. Like if a pick doesn't make much sense, like I don't like Brian O'Neill doesn't make much sense to me. I I don't think with, with these developmental O-line, they always get thrown into the mix too early. You know, even if it's not fair to them. And then we crucify the Vikings rightly for pushing them in there. And the guy's career gets stunted. No, that's right. Sperano just buried um, some footballs. Oh, good. yeah. No, that, that, that'll totally work. Like, no, I, I don't have any faith in our, in our uh, O-line coach to develop O-line talent. I don't think he should be given the benefit of the doubt at that point. Maybe that'll change, you know, down the road. I mean, these are all hypothetical situations where, I don't know, like, it, it shouldn't be criminal to speculate that based on what we know. But then, you know, it's, get the, it's always, uh, oh, they're, uh, they're drafting for the future. Like, this is, this is for two to three years it's down the, the line. It's the Super Bowl window, okay, there, there, man. There's no rule where a guy has to be, you know, if it's an immediate impact player, he can't develop down the road as well. If they're not mutually exclusive. If you have a guy like that is going to develop two to three years down the road. A lot of times that's just code for he's bad. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's not like everyone has potential though. Uh, Alex, except for like, Jalen you know, in good faith, if you like the picks, that's fine. I, I mean, if you're crazy about Brian O'Neill, that's cool. But like the logical fallacies, like we, we drudge up every year to justify these picks and then like, just be super dickish to other fans who are not super wild about the draft. It's like, come on, man. I, to, I don't know. I, no, no, I, to, I, I, have you guys yeah. seen, like, gameplay for, what's that game called, uh, We Happy Few? Uh, what, uh, we Happy uh. Few? No, I haven't. Uh, it's, a, it's like a dystopian society where everyone takes drugs to be super happy, and if Sounds you're awesome. not super happy, and then, then the purge like happens. Feelings. And that's, like, the feeling I get from <laughs> Vikings for Twitter shortly well, after the draft. I, I, oh, so it's like Brave New World. Yeah, basically, yeah. I do have a question. I mean, I know that he brought up Rick Spielman being kind of risky, but I never really looked at Rick Spielman as being uh, consider like comparatively to other GMs. I don't really look at him as being a risky guy because well, I if mean, you think about it in the context of the offensive line, I yeah, think it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, he's definitely been risky. There. But yeah. as far as like you know other picks, I mean, we've looked at it in the past couple of years. Let's look at 2014. We knew we needed a quarterback. We drafted a quarterback in the first round. Like, yeah, he, he took a huge he, risk he, he, there, though. But he took a risk in terms of he of playing the board of not of not going after the guy that he probably wanted at their first uh yeah first, I, this so round that's a pretty risky also the yeah. anthony bar pick itself was super risky yeah. that's a position convert but i mean it as far as uh, this as far guy as on the Anth- phone sounds a lot more reasonable than you uh, right no. now. Well, as far as Let's Anthony, take a look Bar- at the risk. Well, as far right. as Anthony Barr, I mean, didn't didn't uh, Zim do some somewhat of considerable work with Anthony Barr? Like, it wasn't- yeah, you work him out on the field to see if he's like fluid and covered. That's still super risky. But but in terms of like, okay, they let's say they don't get Teddy because look at the what was on the board. You had <laughs> your Blake Bortles who already went at mm-hmm. four. You had Johnny Manziel and you had Teddy Bridgewater, and then you also had Derek, Derek Carr and. Was that that wasn't Jimmy Garoppolo draft? Was it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Mm-hmm. It was. Mm-hmm. So I mean, you, it's not that you didn't have options; you still had options at taking a quarterback. It's the just fact that, that they traded up kind of implies that they liked Teddy. A good yeah, deal they more. did, and it's the quarterback they def- position definitely where those marginal differences yeah, matter that, a lot more. So then that's that's twenty fourteen, but then you look at twenty twenty fifteen, and right. then you have obviously the Trey Wayne's pick. Right. Everyone Which knew that was they were not g- risky in the same sense. Yeah, I they, get that. Everyone knew that they were kind of going going to go a uh, position D. I guess what I'm saying is. When I look at the risky GMs, are necessarily the guys who are maybe going um, the at, at that time we were kind of steering away from the the high risk type players who had a lot of character concerns and whatnot at that given time, or maybe it was maybe it was like you know really high. Uh, ceiling, but you know, low floor type guys, and I think a lot of the guys that we've drafted over those uh, last couple of years have, for the most part, kind of been in the middle. I, don't know, I guess I, maybe I'm just looking at just the first round picks, but I didn't see very many risks that Spielman has taken over the last several years. So what you're telling me is I should be more mad than I actually am. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't just a level of risk. We're just ignoring. Well, yeah, no, it, yeah, because at the end of the day, I think it would have been a little bit of a. Uh, n- Maybe risk is the wrong word, but it would have been somewhat of a gamble because you're obviously you are drafting a, a, an offense line, or more importantly, probably a guard or a tackle. 
um, at pick 30, which, you know, obviously it's the non-premium position so that, you know, there's always that chance that you could have gotten a uh, better impact player at a different position, like, you know, the quarterback corner or defensive end. But, you know, at the same time, now you're the Vikings are in a position where they are probably going to have to be a little bit more creative with their offensive scheme and play calling and whatnot because now they have to make up for that pretty obviously glaring need. Right. We have the, the highest paid quarterback in NFL history. Yes. It'll work out. Who has shown that when the situations around him are not absolutely ideal and perfect, yeah. his his play definitely diminishes well, quite a bit. I mean, they wouldn't have paid him that money. If he couldn't have got it done under less than ideal situations, like he's basically yeah, Russell course, Wilson. Yeah, yep. Yeah, he's def- like Russell Wilson definitely. except good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Kirk yeah. Cousins, Russell Wilson, same, same person, same guy, same old, same. Uh, round. Any other thoughts you want to unload? <laughs> On what? Uh, yeah, you want to you want to drop off some thoughts? Uh, wait, Alex, I have no, a question. Well, I mean, so I, I hate to go this route. I really hate to drop this bomb, but the Lombardi Trophy case is empty for us. So I really don't say, and I understand. Spielman, you know, that's not all on him. But, you know, I, uh, I, I I think as fans, you know, for, you know, we we consume the games every year. A lot of us spend a lot of money. We devote a lot of time to it. I just think, in general, we're allowed to, it, like I said, I'm I'm just a fan. I don't really know whether or not these guys pan out. I mean, Colby said could end up being, you know, a, Steve Hall of Fame player, right. a lock to start on the O line, and I'll look like a slack jawed dumbass. Then you know, three weeks into the season, but, but at but least I'll have I mean, a good like, card. And that's the thing: like we talk <laughs> about how these guys are not, you know, nobody really knows. Nobody. Well, okay, but you know, by and large, the guys that are hyped up to be NFL ready and you know, good players, more often than not, they end up being good players. I think we we tend to you know, use the idea that sometimes guys perform unexpectedly as kind of a crutch to just be like, well, all these guys might be great. You know, I don't know. Brian O'Neill's probably not going to be great. I, maybe he will be. We'll see. <laughs> you, you covered the whole gauntlet there. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I feel a whole lot better now. Okay, thanks, well, That's guys. good. All right. I'll that's what we're here go. for. Hey, Alex, appreciate you calling yeah, in, man. Yeah. Appreciate you. Yeah. Doctors Carlson, Hassan, and Allende reporting Ooh. in. Uh, I, I'm a physical assistant. Sorry, <laughs> uh, ex- that last call, just give him a call back. <laughs> Sometimes they pick up. That's weird. Don't do it. You look like you're about to do it. Don't do it. I'll do it. <laughs> He's yeah, do it. Do it. No, do don't it. do it. How do I do it? You don't. really are trying so hard to convince everyone in this room not to do it. Yeah, guys, don't do it. Oh, no. Come yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I think it's that one. Yep. No, yeah. what are you doing? Happy, what? happy, good time. Oh, this is be great. Watch it's just like a telemarketer. This is awesome. We're calling a different guy, right? Like, I'm just, I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're both the same area codes, though. So. So yeah. Excuse it can me, be sir. The same do, you, do you have a moment to talk about Jesus Christ? Hello. Hey, guys. Hey. How you doing? Hello. Hey, 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 this is the football machine. You called in. Oh, what's up, guys? Yeah, what? this is your favorite talent. Hey, Talon. I know what's going Reef on? knows me. He keeps confusing me for another Talon, but <laughs> the one I grew up with. There's, yeah. there's only like three yeah. Talons in the world, <laughs> Reef. Now, Jimmy yeah. Talon, host of the Tonight Show. You're uh, wait, wait, hold on. Uh, so are you are you Talon? Because you're not at John Claw Force. You're Talon John 06, right? Yeah, Talon. Yeah, Talon Johnson. T John 06. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Hey, it's under my man. Cool. So yeah, guys, thanks for calling back. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, I guess my basic question, you know, I mean, you guys get been through everything, but uh, you know, my biggest question is, you know, let's say something happens at wide receiver, let's say Stephon Diggs sprains his knee and he's week to week for four, five, six weeks, and then Adam Thielen okay, just dope. miraculously, um, let's say he breaks his finger, you know, and he's out four to six weeks. Charlie, well, then we I got... question your use of the word miraculously. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep going. Well, what I'm saying is, I mean. Do we have that depth? No, we no, we absolutely, that guy we absolutely that do not. No, step up and be that. Well, no, it, it depends no. when Thielen or... breaks his finger because uh, then Caleb Jones is coming off suspension. <laughs> <laughs> no, no hey, that, that's a really good point. I that, really hope he does. I'm that not was about that no, four week suspension, but I just want to know. I mean, do you guys feel that we have adequate depth? No, that no. He's gonna be able, or someone's going to be able to step up and say, "Hey, 
you know what? I'm going to get the yeah, no, absolutely five, not. six catches a week for 80 yards and a touchdown. That's yeah, the, put me, it, the know, Vikings the may level. have the the biggest talent differential between the top of the receiver depth chart and like the middle of the receiver <laughs> yeah, depth right. chart. And that was and, and a reef. Uh, he was really high on Anthony Miller, and I became really high on Anthony Miller just because I knew they that him you <laughs> eighth, exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, well, knew about the medicals, yeah, yeah right. Knows? But anyways, like that was actually one of one of the concerns that I had in a lot of mock drafts that I did. Um, I did take a wide receiver kind of high and Anthony Miller type mm-hmm. guy just because. After Stefan Diggs and Adam Thielen, you really don't have anybody. Jerry's right is gone now. You don't really have that third wide receiver. And then it becomes a thing where it's like um, Stefan Diggs has already proven year after year that he's probably not going mm-hmm. to give you 16 games. He's probably at best going to give you 14, you know, 15 maybe. So you know that you're right. going to have to ha- you're going to ha- go at least 14, a one for each million. It's going to get paid. Exactly. <laughs> so so it so it is kind of a scary notion when, you know, you are going to be out without one of those guys because I think Stefan Diggs more so than uh, Adam Thielen can carry the offense. I think Adam Thielen without Stefan Diggs, I think it's a different Adam Thielen that we've seen um so I, I am I am just worried along with your concerns as well too having the depth behind those two because it's not there at all. That's so why they got Tyler Conklin, baby. They'll be good. <laughs> okay. So do you think that we have a, a receiver that could step in be the premier number three this? Uh, no, because they didn't. They didn't. Nay. Third time uh, They didn't really call. address it. I mean, I know they got Kendall Wright. The hope that he oh, yeah. becomes a the slot guy. Right. Yeah, uh, Kendall Wright. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that I guy. like that we haven't even <laughs> mentioned Treadwell yet in this conversation. Yeah. Well, he's he's basically I, I off the team it. at this point. Um but yeah, it, it is it is a grave concern and it's it's going to show up in that middle of the season in my opinion where some of those games are going to become really important as far as, you know, figuring out uh, seedings and rankings and stuff. So Wait, late game late late season games matter? Wow. Thanks, Yinka. I said middle of the season though. Okay. Yeah, hey, you some know, of those games will be really important, man. <clears throat> I'm just saying, like, middle, like, like week 15. Terrell Pryor, a touchdown. Cousins can get uh, Laquan Treadwell, too, I have a belief. So, yeah. I, I have there, there were people asking me about like whether or not the Vikings should reunite Terrell Pryor and Kirk Cousins, <laughs> and it's like, absolutely not. Because they have such great chemistry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're right, yeah. Um, yeah, no, you're right. If If... Those might be the the two starting like quarterback wide like those might be the quarterback pair, quarterback wide receiver pair that had the least amount of chemistry in the league. So I think you've got a good point that like if Kirk Cousins can get like what was it four touchdowns for Terrell Pryor, uh, yep. yeah maybe he'll get Laquan Treadwell like you know three like that makes sense. <laughs> really. I mean, Terrell Pryor was really bad. Last. You watch any of that? Wow, was he bad? He alligator armed yeah. something open in the end zone. I don't even know, like. What are you scared of? He should have refused to switch a receiver like Lamar. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Awesome, uh, guys. Thanks. Really appreciate you taking my call. And it's good to talk to you guys. Yeah, time. thank you, Talon. Yeah. Thanks, Talon. Have appreciate a great one. Thanks a lot. Ooh. Ooh. Was that a baby or baby's mama? Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, <Okay. laughs> oh, All right. Let's uh, wrap up these prayer questions, then uh, bounce at school C's. Mostly for Yinka, what is the courtship process like for UDFA? So what, what was yours like, Yinka, when, uh, what was your, when, when, yeah. when they you were, were courting, yeah. courting me f- yeah. to be QB, what, three or four? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's an interesting one. Uh, I spent a lot of time with Colin just kind of talking over and stuff. I mean, it's a lot of it's a lot of hurry up and wait. Um, definitely he, he spent a lot of time just like working out, just making sure he was, you know, staying good in some of the areas of a lot of things that his agent was telling him that like teams are looking for and whatnot. Um, everything's really run through your agents. Obviously yeah. it makes sense. You know, they, your agents really will fight on your behalf. Tell them like, Hey, this is what my guy can do for your team. Um, and whatnot. Sometimes you, <laughs> sometimes you will, the players will just get these random phone calls. Mm-hmm. Like cool. I told me like last, uh, I think it was last week or a couple of weeks ago. Uh, he just got a random phone call from, you know, the Arizona Con- Cardinals and whatever, just, you know, yeah, checking to make sure it's his phone number. They, so. they had the third last, uh, third to last pick in the draft, and I was like, "Come on!" Uh, no, I actually, I actually did look at the draft. And I'm like, "Okay, well, if he's going to get picked, like Arizona's coming up," but it didn't happen. But um, yeah, they they called him and just like, "Hey, we just want to make sure this is your phone number." Uh, the Texans reached out to him uh, via his agent and stuff. So. I, like I said, it's a lot of hurry up and wait. But now that he's he has an invite with the Vikings and stuff, 
um, things are going to be a little bit different because he is going to have to, like, obviously he's going to be performing next to guys like Mike Hughes and some of the other Vikings mm-hmm. rookies and stuff, but he's also going to be um, having to, you know, break break the mold of, yeah. like, you know, maybe the six or seven other invitees. And they're probably looking to sign maybe one or two more of these guys. So he should the, the, Vikings, the Vikings bring on uh, probably more invites from the rookie camp than almost any other team yeah. and cut undrafted free agents in the process. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's a really good opportunity. Also, did you mention the, another uh, rookie minicamp invite, too, or no? No, he did not. Um uh, I did ask him about that last night, actually, and he's he hadn't heard anything mm-hmm. from that. But you know, well, Yinka, I know that uh, blood is thicker than purple. So <laughs> if say oh, it doesn't fair. work out with the Vikings, and then the Packers were like, yeah, hey, oh, that's hey. interesting. Yeah, yeah. that's so, a, that's something I've actually thought about. A lot. I actually was thinking about through the draft process. Like, okay, it becomes if- an all pro, like uh, like a good ha ha, ha Clint Dix, but good. No, yeah, I I. You know, I want him to be happy, and this is something that he wants to do. So yep. yeah, but I mean, the Packers play the Vikings. He's the starting safety or whatever. What do you do? Who are you cheering for? Okay, so here's <laughs> here's what happens, right? So here's what's going to happen. Kirk Cousins are QB, right? Yeah. So how I that. how I can mitigate my my Kirk Cousins angst is the Vikings are up by twenty one points. You want Yink, you Vic- want you want Kunle to have a good game, but the Vikings to win. Just say it. Yes, but this is this is the this is the exact this is the exact scenario, right? This is the exact scenario. So not twenty one points. The Vikings are up by the Vikings are up by seven. Uh, fourth quarter, Kirk Cousins throws a pick six to Kunle, and it's it's the last play of the game, and the the field goal kicker misses the field goal, and the Vikings <laughs> win by one point. That would be the most ideal scenario. Where, to make. where Kunle wins the game, but he doesn't win the game. Exactly. Oh my god. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, but like, but if you can't, or they, your, or they go enough. for, or they go for two. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. But and like, then, if you can't have your cake and eat it too, who do you want to? It's just the Vikings, right? Yeah. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, I want the Vikings too, but yeah, I, I would, yeah. I wouldn't hold it against you if you were like, no, I mean, my family plays for the Packers. I'm gonna be a temporary Pack. I wouldn't hold that against if, you at if all. If you got no, you all, the like, I, I would still, I still, like, but the thing is, is I would still want the Vikings to win, but I would yeah. want him to overperform. Well, okay, what so if your brother got you all the cool Packers swag you could eat? <laughs> it's like boxes and all boxes the of like all the, the awesome, Colby like Nike dry fit <laughs> Packers gear. Oh, wow. I would I, need I would need the Vikings to do like feet. something horrific <laughs> to me, and then I'll just be like, okay, well, you guys, I don't have any choice. Let, uh, like, let, I have to be like, the, what was let that? a child abuser yeah. become the face of the franchise. No, 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 like, no, that no, kind you can Ragnar it. Well, yeah, that's <laughs> Ragnar. That's what I'm gonna say. That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> uh, okay, well, okay. So, but in this scenario, are you like? I want the Packers to go fourteen and two and like lose their games against the Vikings, or like, how do you want the Packers to do in that situation? Well, I guess, I guess in that scenario, like I said, because I want him to perform and it, for him to be performing well, I think that would mean the Packers are doing fairly well. Yeah, because safeties have such a big impact on the game. That's a good point. Yes, <laughs> so least, I mean they, at least two points. <laughs> at least. <laughs> <clears throat> um, as far, but like as far as ex, hold on, as far as ex, I think I have this. Uh, Graphic. Did you map out like your rooting priorities in a world where Kunle plays for the Packers? Man, <laughs> got a flow, flow chart. chart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, that's great. You can cheer for the Packers in this. It's fine. No, I have. Like, <laughs> you can't. I, I, I just. It's just. Can't. It's hard, man. It's hard. I've been a Vi- Vikings fan all my life, and. All I've That's known. Not very it. long. What you're like, 22? Come on, it's like no big deal, dude. We're the same age. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 27. What you're 28? Yeah, like 28 or 29. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I do look. Tw- I do look like 18 when I shave my beard oh, off. Joel. That's that's how I'm. Brag. That's how club. I'm able to play the. No, that's true. That <laughs> is true. Because when I, I met you and Kunle, like, I had Kunle's my beard shaved. yoked out, and then you were shaving, and then you, I was like, "Who's the little brother?" <laughs> What's going no, because I had I had an, uh, uh, a photo shoot just like I think the day before, so I yeah. had I had to shave to look younger for the for the shoot or whatever. Yeah. And yes, I look 18 when you're, I sh- you're playing shape. Don Cheadle as a child. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're the War Machine. <laughs> That's your new Twitter name. <laughs> War Machine. Uh, all right, well, uh, I'm gonna come after. I would root for him to the to answer the question. Yes, I would root for the Packers to do. So like 14 to. W- would you wear yeah, his Super Bowl ring? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. definitely. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Somebody has to keep that safe. 
<laughs> it's not your brother. <laughs> he would lose it. He would lose it. I can guarantee you. I saw it keep it on. So. Uh, at Doug Nasby, if the new kicker, uh, if the new kickoff rules apply, how smart is our kicker pick? Uh, well, I mean, kicking from fifty I plus mean, is still good. Well, I don't like right. kick off. But like, no, I, I, yeah, no, I know. Yeah, yeah. What, what I'm saying is, if you essentially eliminate the kickoff, yeah. right? Uh, it's still good to kick from 50-plus, which Kai Forbath cannot do, yeah. right? And it's still good to make extra points, which presumably Daniel Carlson can. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, it's still, like, fine. Yeah. I don't think it, like, it's, like, it's the fifth round, right? Like, the yeah. difference between a fifth rounder and a sixth rounder and a seventh rounder, pretty small. Yeah. So, like, it's fine. Uh, if it was fine before, I mean, uh, it's uh, fine uh, now. Uh, Reefy yeah. made 198 extra points in a row from, Jesus. like, five feet out. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, at Chief and Help. Uh, with uh, Shahid Khan trying to buy a Wembley, could a London franchise ever work? No. No. Next. Uh, at <laughs> Keep him going. Uh, Thanks, Yanka. Last, uh, ooh, two to go. <laughs> Sweet Skull, when Isidore was drafted last year, what were his strengths and weaknesses? His strength. Uh, how, how did you look in game time last year? The, basically, how did Isidore look last year? I uh, thought Isidore was going to be a lot better than what he's kind of. I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, and long term, not an immediate starter type okay. guy. But it I, was thought, Isidore I thought season. Yeah, I, I thought he was. I thought he was going to be great. And then no. he just sucked. I, I thought he was going to be. I thought he was going to be a developmental right guard a type guy. But right. um, seventh floor crew. I don't know. I just I, you, obviously you've seen. Um, I haven't seen very much from him. So like the. Talk with, about, you want to talk about a safe pick. For a fifth round, or Isidore was meant to be a safe pick. Yeah, yeah it was. Consistent starter, I think, 40-plus starts. Uh, well, ended so up becoming Khalil, a, a, so. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, like, we all know that there's no... We don't have to say it every single <laughs> time. Um, but, like, you know, 40-plus starts, team captain, I think, uh, allowed very few sacks in his final year. Uh, so, it was like, numbers were fine uh, from that perspective. Uh, technique was supposed to be sound. I actually kind of didn't agree that his technique was very sound. I didn't like him. Uh, as a pick that much, yeah, uh, I think he's kind of outperformed my expectations so far. Um, but well, he protected by Felicia's kid extremely well. Uh, yeah, he did yeah. well. But up until Easton like went down, down, and he had to step in and play like spot duty role here and there. Yeah, I thought he did well. He did, that was yeah. fine. But yeah, yeah, when he got thrust into the, in well, the full starter, it was that, it was role, that, right. it was that was one. Problem. It was that, was that one game that people were like, "Oh my God, it's Isadora season!" And then yeah. after that game, right. it was like, "That's true." No, Plus, did yeah, he I mean, deal with the ankle? I mean, all the same year? thing happened to Rashad Hill. Really. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Seventeen against the Chicago Bears. Wow, he killed it. And it's like, yeah, he's blocking like an amputated Leonard Floyd. It's fine. But yeah, I mean. That should be a rock band. <laughs> it should be a rock band, right? That's our band name, Amputated. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, uh, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't love the pick. I thought, you know, he did a really poor job, uh, you know, punching his hands inside, generating strength because he's supposed to be strong. But like, his technique always robbed him of strength. Thought his base was too wide. Uh, and I thought there was just like too much to fix. Um, I think he's kind of improved uh, in in that area. Uh, Pretty quickly, mm-hmm. but you know he's got a ceiling, and I think that ceiling is to be a really good backup. Last one, uh, D fifteen eleven. Uh, could Hercules make the team as a double A gap blitzer like Barr slash Kendricks? Uh, seems like if you learn basic <laughs> linebacker <laughs> skills, he could be excellent at that role. <laughs> I was doing the Hercules, so yeah. <laughs> Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> also, does Hill have the best chance of being UDFA to make the Vikings this year? Uh, uh, second part, yeah. Hill, yes. Yeah. Uh, what was the first question, part of the question? Uh, can Herc be a double A gap uh, look linebacker? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, can that be his only role? I think he has to. Well, that would kind of ruin the point. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Guess what's coming? He, he's going to have to. Right. It's not going to drop. Uh, he would he would have to I think maybe lose a little bit more weight because yeah. like again he's two fifty three I think he has to maybe lose to weight to two thirty eight which of <laughs> course his frame can support I mean that's yeah. I mean he gained a lot of weight when he arrived at Washington State um, so he can he can support two thirty eight and then he has to have like concurrent improvements in agility and speed so that he can drop into coverage and importantly attack uh, screens because the most yeah. common response to double A gap looks is to throw a screen and Eric Hendricks and Anthony Barr are incredible at shutting those down. See, from my limited exposure to Herc, Herc. Uh, he, he seems like the kind of guy that is like, hey, we need you to drop to 140 pounds for Les Miserables <laughs> and then we need you to bulk up to 185 uh, So he's for like Christian Wolverine. Bale. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I feel like he would do it. <laughs> he just has that. It's like, yeah, I'll get done. Christian Bale, Renez Elwager. Good to go. Yeah. They yeah. can just do it. Yeah. <laughs> Kirk Elise Mata Afa. Yeah. Same people. Did you ever watch The Machinist? Yeah. It's well, creepy. I didn't finish it, it's, but uh, it's super creepy. Wow. But uh, what's coming up from you guys? What are you working on? Smooth transition. 
Uh, I'm going to do an analytics piece on uh, the undrafted free agents. I've done analytics pieces on every pick except for the kicker because I just I, like I don't know what works for that. Um, but uh, yeah, those are all up at zonecoverage.com. I'm going to be doing them. I'm probably just going to do one piece for mm-hmm. all of them, uh, all the undrafted free agents. Uh, and then after that, I'm going to start working on the guide. Woo, woo. And uh, so the training camp guide's got scouting reports on all 90 players that should be in training camp. By the time the guide gets released, one or two of those players will probably be cut, and they'll add one or two players, yeah. whatever. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a pretty long-term project. And uh, in the meantime, I don't know, probably talk about DeFilippo's offense? I, don't, I have no idea. Yeah, I forgot about DeFilippo. Yeah. Get hyped. Jake, yeah, how about you? Uh, nothing specifically. I probably just maybe, I maybe start trying to break down some of the um, 2017 film and whatnot to see what, what things work, what things did not. Um, they fixed probably the biggest thing that did not. Uh, I don't have time to watch film. I have a life. Yeah. I'm a fan. I just watch the games. I know what I see. Yeah, the first time, <laughs> have drunk. <laughs> Screaming at your buddies. Anyways, ah. um, yeah, that's what I'm getting through. Uh, Dex, how about you? Uh, well, this is the off season for old Declan. Uh, Good old Declan. For, old Declan for my concrete writing ideas. Uh, I'm more more on the Minnesota Hockey Magazine side, so this yep. is our this is our downtime right now, which is actually great because March was absolutely bananas with the girls' hockey tournament, boys' hockey tournament, two couch hockey tournaments, and plus the Frozen Four. <laughs> so it was a lot. Uh, um, also, Lucia oh, being fired, retired. Lucia oh, being fired. Old uh, Moscow deck. being hired as a St. Cloud grad. So yes, there was a lot going on in March and April for hockey. I'm yep. glad the oh. Wild got bounced. It's, it's like <laughs> a hell of a lot easier. <laughs> no, old see, Declan is is a 6'4 bearded man and chops his firewood yeah, right. in his backyard. Oh, I'm the angry old man when I'm older. I'm going to be that guy for yeah. sure. No, see, Dex is uh, just like life. Like uh, We poach the best from St. Cloud to bring to the Twin Cities. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Everyone's favorite safety school. Everyone's favorite safety graduate. It's it's uh, <laughs> had to retake a class to get the degree because I was off by a hundredth point. But that's fine. I mean, it worked out. No yeah, one remembers how you out. get there. The diploma's in my bathroom. It's on the towel rack. It's great. It's where my diploma sits. Crazy, mine too. I was well. I wanted to put it in front. I I was debating. Do I want it in front of the toilet? Every time you're taking a huge dump, or right. do I want it like in the back? So yeah, yeah. do I want to look at it? pissing or do i want looking at taking a dump and i started Important. doing it pissing but then it kept falling down especially in the middle uh, of the night it would scare the living crap out of me so yeah. all of a sudden bang and it was not fun so i eventually put Did it that the feel metaphorical record. i feel like bit. i feel like if you're taking the number two it'd feel a lot more metaphorical <laughs> yeah a little bit uh listen hour one we talk the draft all that other good stuff shows available on itunes stitcher i heard radio as well so coverage.com slash machine but for not luke but for Reef and uh, Yinka and Dex working the board, I'm Andy Carlson, St. Anux NR, and bye bye. Oh, is this ever clear? Yeah. yeah. Shoot, yeah. Black boots and an old